So the area that we're going to focus on uh, today is uh, what in the Netherlands has been uh, organized in, uh, in the area between basic sciences and, uh, and actually the implementation of the basic knowledge. The disease areas, like I said, 40% is oncology, 40% is in cardiovascular disease and then we have the Alzheimer's, sepsis and rheumatoid arthritis as dedicated areas and we're really focusing on the large cancers. The example show what's shown here shows a, uh, a tumor which is hot on the pet because it's FDG. Uh, uptake uh, which is shown here, obviously as we all know FDG is not very specific. Also Philips is working on point of care uh, solution uh, in, in small cartridges where uh, in, in a lab on a chip type of device you can look for biomarkers and that's being used in the cardiovascular arena in this particular case for early heart failure. And then finally, uh, very important also, we try, not very popular with academic research as well, we try to invest in the medical technology assessment. And that's why I would like to end. So basically the Department of Bioinformatics is integrating da data from patients drug treatments, expression profiles, functions of genes or proteins that scientists and clinicians try to study. So what you see here on this slide is one of the activities that we have started to deploy here in the Bay Area roughly a year ago. So what you see here is all kind of views that we generate on data. I'm not going to specify specific analysis here. So we have set up very strong biobanks, which was already referred to in the previous talks. So uh, the biobank with the leukemia samples, we apply omics technologies. Well, obviously what we see on this picture, we've built a cinema in our department where you can project MRI, CT, ultrasound images in 3D. And obviously assessment and management of risk is very important for patients. So last but not least, obviously we talk about patients. So thanks for your attention. I want to impart a bit of a frame shift into your thinking about where technology is integrating to affect uh, not just therapies in terms of treating cancer, but also other elements um, in terms of wellness and prevention. We often don't even use the information we have. The information we have is scattered in different places um, and there's a lot of waste in the system. Um, so that we really start to move this curve to the left because most of what we're spending our dollars on are kind of at the end of life. So briefly back to the, the phone, the phone in a sense is becoming a medical device. I can visit my doctor now, sort of uh, telemet telemetrically, Skype type sessions are being done and set up where you can visit sort of online. They're starting to be put together into one, um, let's say, dashboard. Um, and uh, as those come together, we can learn more about that data. It'll be more useful, both in prevention and therapy. And maybe even make your own personalized stem cell bank, um, which eventually will be integrated with 3D printing, the ability to take um, tissues and engineering together, eventually print, for example, your own part with uh, a variety of things. I think where things are getting exciting is the integration of you know, smaller devices, personalization, decentralization, and by putting these together, I think it's, it's a really exciting era to innovate. We cure people essentially before they get sick. So I'll stop there, and thanks.